Learn from history when investing in collectibles. What do I mean by that? Essentially, right now, I see a lot of people trying to tell you to invest in product X. I don't even want to name a specific product, product X. Whether in Yu-Gi-Oh, whether in Pokemon, whether in Beanie Baby, that's kind of done. If you don't know what happened there, Google it. Usually they go like, you know, I made 200% profit on this product and so it's a good investment. Now be very aware, past returns don't predict future returns. So if you notice, hey, Charizard used to be 50 and now he's 250,000. So if I buy Charizard at 250,000, what's 250,000 divided by 50? Yeah, I'll jump that amount again. I don't think so. So past returns don't predict future returns. That's also like why if you are someone who's buying evolutions booster boxes right now in Pokemon, you're an idiot. Will they maybe go up? Yeah, if they're bigger idiots than you are. However, long, 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 long term, you're an idiot. These were printed into oblivion and those packs are literally still being inserted into product right now. Do you understand what that means? Not only is it not rare, it is becoming less rare every day. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm using it in Pokemon because in Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, we're starting to see a little bit of this, but it's a bit more rare. So if you're gonna invest into these collectibles, I want you to actually research what happened to other collectibles before it. Now, when I say that, I don't mean, oh, so MTG Modern Boxes jumped from 2016 around 200% to now. So therefore, if I take a Yu-Gi-Oh box in 2020, then in 2024, they will also have jumped. And so I am a big stonks investor. I don't know about that. Maybe you should research what happened to Beanie Babies. Hmm, that's not really a conversation many people want to be having when it comes to investing in collectibles, but maybe, just maybe, you want to read up on it. Or what about best dispensers? Yeah, that's another one, a best dispenser, ho, 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 ho. If you believe that some of these items, of which you literally know, there are currently tens of thousands being produced, but magically, you still told yourself in your head that these are scarce and will go up in price because of their scarcity? I don't know if you really know what scarcity means. And so, even on these, be very aware. Even if you're buying your pretty LOB, obviously these are more safe. You at least know from pop reports how many are out there. And yeah, they may go up if a few more LOBs get cracked, but in general, you know it's not gonna go up by a lot. Most of them got destroyed over 18 years. And the print runs also weren't that big either because it was still a bit of an experiment. But with a modern product, let's say, I don't even know, Battle of Legends Armageddon, you know there are tens of thousands of cases out there, printed. And there are thousands of people cracking them still, pulling minty cards and putting them in a sleeve, in a top loader, in a binder, all being preserved beautifully. So don't talk to me about scarcity. There is none. If you try to tell yourself that there is any scarcity whatsoever, stop lying to yourself. And so be very aware that when interest in a collectible kind of wanes, or maybe even the trust that that collectible will keep on going up wanes, be very aware of what can happen to your not so scarce items. And again, even these, they are speculative. All collectibles are speculative. Not when you start looking into the time proven stuff, you know, like with your coins and with your fancy dollar bills and your historical documents and your furniture from 1750 or whatever. Obviously those have been established over many, many years. But when we are talking about short term collectibles that were mass produced, be very, very skeptical. Again, even on these, but way less than Battles of Legends Armageddon, than Evolutions, than Champions Path. So when someone's promising you, yeah, right now you can buy Evolutions at 500 and by December, maybe it'll be a thousand. Well, maybe if there are bigger idiots than you, then yes, they might be a thousand. And if you then sell, great on you, well done. However, if you are the last to hold it and you are the last idiot and you ran out of bigger idiots, then you're gonna have a problem. When everyone realizes, hey, so uh, we have another set with some evolutions packs and another and another 
and another. And who knows what they'll even do for the 25th anniversary. Maybe there's an Evolutions 2, a better one, or anything like that. I'd be scared. I'd be really, really fucking scared. So be aware of that. That's why on this channel, I always go ahead, like get an emergency fund. Be sure you actually own real financial assets as well. A majority, hopefully. Like if your net worth looks like this, emergency fund zero, savings $20, and then a card of 5,000, there's something wrong in your makeup of your positions. I hope you understand that. If your rent is 800 and your income is 1,200 and your position in Battles of Legends Armageddon is 3,000 worth of boxes just sitting there hoping to appreciate because hopefully the interest in your Battles of Legends Armageddon will go up enough that that's worth it. If that's the way your net worth is structured, I'd be extremely, extremely afraid. So that's why I say, learn from history. See what happened to a Pokemon card over X years. See what happened to collectibles as a whole over 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Yes, someone may, may tell you, oh, but eBay wasn't as big yet, or we didn't have Instagram, or we didn't have social media, so now it's different. Every single time people say now it's different, and every single time they're wrong. Now this video isn't trying to tell you to not put any money into collectibles. Obviously, this channel is about investing and collecting Yu-Gi-Oh! But I'm just trying to make sure that people who follow this channel are also rational. And I know that's gonna be very hard because there's polar opposites here. There's gonna be your hype beasts who are telling you like, yeah, put your five bucks into this card and then you're gonna triple your money, $15, so you made $10 profit, never mind the fact that you spent four hours trying to get it sold and shipping and so forth, so you're actually making two and a half an hour, which is not really minimum wage. Just be very, very skeptical, do your research, not just inside Yu-Gi-Oh. Don't just try to say like, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh isn't like the others, so I'll just look at this market. This market is young as fuck. 18 years is young as fuck. So yeah, that was all. Hope you found this interesting. Like, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Ciao.